Hi kids! Welcome to Peel Up Kids Church. What do you do with something that can't be fixed? If it's real, I mean broken beyond repair. If it's replacement parts, I mean parts cost more than a new one. There's only one thing to do. Toss it in the trash. Say goodbye to your favorite toy. <laughs> Just kidding, just toss it. If it's, I mean, it's not that it's impossible to fix them. It's just that sometimes it would cost more time, more effort, and energy to fix than it would to replace. Before Jesus completed his mission on earth by dying for our sins, I mean sins, he performed a miracle that shows us nothing is impossible. He raised his friend, Lazarus, from the dead. Jesus has the power over sin and death. Nothing is beyond his ability to repair, not even a relationship with God. The angel who visited Mary before Jesus was born told her, Nothing is impossible with God. Jesus can fix anything. And the one thing he wants to fix most is us.
amazing shows on TV are the shows featuring small remodelers and house flippers. It's incredible to watch a talented craftsman and women take over a home that looks like it needs to be bulldozed and bring it back to life. Where most people see a lost cause, they see possibilities. They take out a few walls, they got the wiring and rip out all the packs, then the rebuild begins. They raise the foundations and receive the dead lot. They install new plumbing and electrical systems. They redo the exterior and roof and rebuild the walls. They apply new paints and install new cabinets and new counters and new lights and plumbing fixtures. In short, what looks like an impossible task leads to an incredible transformation. A lost cause, a home that should have been knocked down, finally lies. It's ready to withstand the trials and tribulations of family life for another 30 to 40 years, all thanks to the hands of experts in home remodeling. If these programs have taught us anything, it's that uh, lost causes are all in the eye of the developer. If a dilapidated home can be brought back to life, anything can. You just need the right jobs person with the right tools and the right visions for the job. When it comes to our lives, there's only one man for the job. Jesus is the craftsman. Uh, we've witnessed six miracles of Jesus in the last several weeks, from saving a wedding by turning water into wine to giving sight to a blind. Today, I mean today, we're going to see one of the most incredible miracles of all. One that shows that Jesus truly does have the power to do the impossible. Stories of the Bible Jesus Raises Lazarus from the Dead This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He did many miracles and healed people of their sickness. Jesus had a friend named Lazarus who was very sick. <coughs> He had two sisters named Mary That's okay. and Martha Here you go. who sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. So come on. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God. Uh, what? So although Jesus loved Martha, Mary and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. All right, I, let's go. Finally, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. Uh, are you sure? But his disciples did not think this was a good idea because the people in Judea had tried to kill Jesus, but Jesus told them they were going anyway. He said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but now I will go and wake him up. The disciples thought Jesus meant Lazarus was simply sleeping, so Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. What? And for your sakes, I'm glad I wasn't there, for now you will really believe. Come, let's go see him. Thomas said to his fellow disciples, let's go too and die with Jesus. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he was told that Lazarus had already been in his grave for four days. Many people had come to be with Mary and Martha because their brother had died. When Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Yes, Martha said, he will rise when everyone else rises at the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Do you believe this, Martha? Yes, Lord, she told him. I have always believed you are the Messiah, the Son of God. 
Then she returned to Mary. She told Mary, The teacher is here and wants to see you. So Mary immediately went to him. When the people who were at the house consoling Mary saw her leave so hastily, they assumed she was going to Lazarus's grave to weep. Oh, let's go too. So they followed her there. When Mary arrived and saw Jesus, she said, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and saw the other people wailing with her, a deep anger welled up within him. Where have you put him? He asked them. They told him, Lord, come and see. Then Jesus wept. The people who were standing nearby said, See how much he loved him? But some said, This man healed a blind man. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? Jesus was still angry and he arrived at the tomb. Roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. Wait, hold on, Jesus! But Martha protested, Lord, he has been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. Jesus said, didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? Go ahead. So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me. But I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here. So they will believe you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out! And Lazarus came out, his hands, feet, and head wrapped in cloth. Uh -huh. Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. Wahoo! Many of the Jews who were there believed in Jesus, for he had raised Lazarus from the dead. Lazarus was not sick. He's he, not anymore. He certainly wasn't asleep. He was dead and he had been for a few days by the time Jesus arrived. The people mourning Lazarus knew Jesus and knew the friendship he had with Lazarus. They truly believed Jesus could have healed Lazarus if only he had arrived a few days sooner. Jesus was not late. He purposely waited for this moment. He wanted to show the world that he had power even over them. Imagine the looks and the faces of the mourners when they saw Lazarus walk out of the tomb. Jesus was no longer just a good teacher in their eyes. He was the one who could fix the impossible. Our memory verse for the week is found in Luke 1 verse 31. Nothing is impossible with God. I'll give you three seconds. Three, two, 
But some people today believe there's another reason why Jesus wept. Maybe it wasn't for a friend. Maybe it was for everyone else around him. After three years of teaching and ministering, they still didn't quite believe in him. Even after seeing Jesus give sight to the blind and healing the sick, they did not know who he was. That was final to them. It was impossible to come back from death. Jesus could do great things, but this was too much even for him. When the angel visited Jesus' mother, Mary, and told her she would give birth to a child con I mean, conceived by the Holy Spirit, he told her nothing is impossible with God. Jesus is the Son of God. He has the power of God in his hands, and that means nothing is impossible for him. Last week, we said Jesus wanted to give sight to all of us. He wants us to see who he, I mean, who he really is. This week's story shows us that Jesus wants to give us new life. He wants us to turn from sin and live a life that pleases God. He wants us to walk with Him every day and to receive the gift of eternal life. Whatever has happened in your life, Jesus can fix it. No matter what you've done or how bad you've messed up, the miracle of Lazarus shows us nothing is impossible for Jesus to fix. So that's all for today, kids. Thank you for listening. Till next week. 